Welcome to Beyond the Expert, a new production of Gorecom in which we take the time to sit down with small cap expert investors, experts in the industry to talk about what's going on in big trends. With us today, happy to have him back, Lee Hughes. Uh, he's a venture capitalist, so I've personally watched conduct uh, incredible dil due diligence and investments in many of the most successful small cap companies we're seeing today on the TSX Venture and primarily the CSE with incredible returns over the last 12 to 18 months. Uh, he's so good at what he does that many global private equity funds and institutions take his call and even sometimes and often follow him uh, into investments that he chooses to make. Uh, and he also serves as an advisor to many small cap public companies. He's awesome. Glad to have him back. Today it's going to be esports, iGaming, gambling. Lee, welcome back, <laughs> All the back, fun man. stuff, George. All the fun stuff. <laughs> How are you? All the, all the fun stuff. Yeah, esports. Uh, I'm, I've got some stats, but you tell me what you're liking about online gambling, iGaming, and esports and the future of those, those areas for the next five, 10 years. Well, again, I think we spoke about it last time, the disruptive tech um, year of 2020, I guess, uh, esports as, uh, well, I guess online gambling, if you want to call it that too. I'm not really a big online gambler, but, you know, the, this esports phenomenon and, uh, yeah, of course, the online gambling sector has, of course, captured a very, very, very big audience, a very bored audience probably that have now found a, a new hobby, uh, not just a hobby, I think uh, even a, I don't know. Do you call it a recreation? Do you call it a job? Probably. A I think job. it's a competition. I think. I think it's. Uh, um, it's ingrained, I, man. I, honestly, I was talking to a kid last week. He's one of the world's number one ranked uh, players for League of Legends. I don't even know what League of Legends was. Um, you know, as close to gaming that I came was Mortal was Mortal Kombat. I think back in the day. Yeah. Um, but I was just absolutely fascinated um, after speaking with him. I've had multiple conversations with him just about the consumer acquisition cost and then how deep it goes. Like once you've got them, how many angles and how many verticals you can hit them with, you know, revenue opportunities, uh, engagement opportunities. I'm just blown away by it actually. So, you know, can I tell you, can I tell you, what? can I tell you my first experience was in 2017. All right, listen to this. I went to the Scotia Air Canada Center, whatever they call the hockey arena in Toronto. It was in August. And a client, Esports Entertainment Group, that was on OTC back then, now yeah. on NASDAQ, $400 Russia. million dollar market cap. So we hit it out of the park with that one. Took yeah. me and said, you got to come see it for yourself. And I won't. We had, I took video. Uh, maybe I'll post a link to it later for everybody to see. It was filled to the rafters. And people were screaming like it was a boxing match. And I didn't know what was going on. It was League of Legends, like what you said, Mortal yeah. Kombat. I was looking at the big screen. Underneath the big screen were two five-man teams hitting keyboards, playing each other. But all the action on the screen, and all I could tell, I knew when the action was happening, is some character was stuck in a corner with shields and tasers and lasers were being fired at him. And the, yeah. and the crowd, the only way I could explain it, it had the same reaction they did as if you and I were at a boxing match or yeah. an MMA fight. And you're seeing one of the fighters about to knock out the other guy and the crowd stands up. So when I saw that passion, that energy, and I spoke to the people in the crowd, I said, hey, by the way, it's August. So are you guys all here for esports? Because, you know, it's August. But in September, October, we're going to start NHL, NBA, NFL. I'm just going to go back to that. And they looked at me like I was from another planet. And they said, yeah. we don't understand guys like you who wait a week to watch something. We're, we love esports matches. We want to bet on esports matches and we can get them all the time. So that was when I said, yeah. I'm all in. And that was the impetus yeah. for the esports entertainment group. Yeah. You know, there's so many opportunities, you know, that there's peer to peer opportunities now where, you know, you and I are versing each other and guys are betting on us in a real time environment. We're betting on each other versus each other. Sorry, in a real time yeah. environment. Um, you've then got, you know, ad groups and ad networks funneling in and obviously, you know, paying these infrastructure and, you know, the infrastructure that obviously these platforms sit on to, you know, push ads across, just like you would see on any, you know, Google, Google network or whatever. Um, just from a, just from a fundamental perspective, when you start to talk about revenue opportunities, 
for these businesses with the platforms that they're building, it's huge. You've got the teams, um, you know. Uh, when 500 I went to, million people around the world watching. Fans, gonna, like actual yeah, fans. Yeah. Golden State Warriors have got a, you know, not just that they've not just got Steph Curry as, as a as a point guard that's known all over the world, or LeBron James at the Lakers. They've even got a they've got an esports team. Um, well, that's the NBA 2K League. So you got yeah. the digital Golden State Warriors playing the digital Toronto Raptors. It's They've had a schedule, championships, contracts, trophies, all of it. And most people don't know that, right? They don't realize that a bunch of kids playing video games is the is the worst way to think about this. Yeah. It is real intense competition. Sorry, one more thing. Over 100 colleges now in the U.S. now have esports scholarships. Yeah. So it's it's going, right? Yeah. What do you think of the opportunity? What kind of money do you think will be made in the small cap world from esports in the next decade? Bucket loads. Um, you know, it's a it's like 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 the Canadian markets do. They always are the first to jump in and create niche markets. Uh, let's call it that it's a niche market right now. I think it's going to be mainstream and mainstream super super fast. Um, you know, you're seeing a lot of the big big VCs down in the US pouring, you know, ginormous amounts of money into not just angel rounds, but they're accelerating to series A, series B, series C, series D, straight onto NASDAQ listings. Uh, you're seeing some of these huge SPACs that are sitting with big pools of money now, uh, looking at opportunities to just take that capital and put it straight into an esports play of some sort. Uh, I'm seeing it, Europe, the European funds are, are now entering the space hard and fast. I know that there's even some uh, some immature deals down in the down in the in, down in Australia on the ASX that are coming to market. I'm um, looking at comparatives of what the deal flow down there looks like to up here. I see that they are probably a lot more immature, but I tell you what they have down there though is they've got on the doorstep that Asian market. You know, yeah, because that is where it's dominated right now. It's not dominant in North America yet because we do have NBA, NHL, and NFL. Yeah. So but it's, it's going to be here. It's going to surpass all these, if it already hasn't, but it will surpass all of those in, yeah. next, in, in the next three, four, five years. Correct. I mean, privately, while I've been watching the space for a while, uh, Korea has been, you know, really quite quite fascinating to watch. You, you are seeing those 60,000 seat stadiums full. Uh, Screaming about, fans, crazy. Talking about stadiums too. Um, you know, I even saw a, an article a couple of days ago that, T Toronto are, are looking at building a, a huge new center for sports. Five hundred million dollar esports arena, seven thousand seats. Lee, yeah. when I was talking to people about investing in esports in 2017, ninety percent of people just shook their heads, and said, uh, "That's just crazy." Kids playing, I don't, you know, that that pious kind of. Uh, but the ten percent of people believe me went into esports entertainment group. At equivalent of two dollars twenty five cents, three seventy five, and four twenty five, and today it's trading at twenty two dollars. Yeah, uh, we're going to see. Not, we're going to see dollar target on it. Honestly, so, I, I believe that's probably going to be. I mean, I know esports e entertainment is going to continue to grow, but I think that story that you just that you just uh, you know you explained, I think that's going to be one of a, one of many. Uh, yeah. That, oh yeah. Oh yeah. This this is this is just beginning. You've got Michael Jordan, you've got Shaquille O'Neal, you've got LeBron James, you've got all these huge sporting identities in the US going into ownership on some of these teams, esports yeah, teams. For sure. Uh, soccer players and us, soccer players in uh, Europe, all the big soccer players yeah. are invested. Brands, so Procter & Gamble, Pepsi, Coke, Correct. all these Nike, global brands, Red Bull, Nike, of course. Nike, Adidas, they're all rolling their ads across all these channels now. Uh, doing these amazing, you know, you're seeing, and then what do you see as a dovetail here? You see esports, you see, you see the, the online gambling industry coming and attaching to it. But then you see cool stuff like AR and uh, VR um, products dovetailing across it too. Yeah, that's uh, diabolical. You know, so I see, I look at it from a customer acquisition perspective, right? Uh, from a, to, to, to look at then the fundamentals and break it down. And to me, the, the, the acquisition component isn't in the hundreds or thousands of dollars like it is, um, you know, 
to go and attract someone to come into say a, a physical casino, book a room, do all the things that they need to do to get them dovetailed in. I mean, this is a low cost. Um, I, I think I think I was seeing something along. Uh, what what was I seeing? A stat: the retention rate as well is super super high, which is great. People, we want to see that. Yeah, because they're on there for an hour or two, right? They're they're they're, they're not they're not four minute. You're not talking about four minute average duration per per session. You're talking about hours. Yeah, I've been reading a lot of uh, analytical reports, uh, especially from some of the big banks down south uh, in the US. Sorry, um, Cowan came up with a great came out with a great one. Stiefel came out with a great one, just to have a look at how they're actually measuring performance and and obviously forward looking stuff. And uh, yeah, uh, it's 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 cool. I, I really like it. Uh, banking it, I think, is going to be super exciting. We're going to see a lot of money coming into. Oh well, we already are. I think Bought Deal Central right now for any any gaming deal that's got any any sort of substance to it. Uh, but I think at the end of the day, George, it's going to come down to uh, cost of acquisition and revenue. And of course, I think like we all do in Canada, we get going and then we just go and seek to acquire that revenue or seek to acquire it as much as, as quick as we can. It's like a race, right? Marathon who do race. You, uh, who are some of the small caps you like? You got to come. Kind because of, uh, of what I like about where you bring tables, the ones that are unknown. Yeah. GMBL, Esports Entertainment Group, because yeah. we've been we've banging the table on that. It's now NASDAQ. And by the way, I'm holding almost 90% of my stock. I think GMBL is a $100 company in the next three to four years. I'm just going to forego the temptation of selling at 10x here. But yeah. what are you finding that people don't know yet? Uh, there's a company that I really, really like. In fact, just started um, working with these guys called Intima, tickers um, ITM, Indigo Tank Mary on the venture. Uh, they've got some serious, serious heavyweights behind them, uh, sitting behind the scenes. I don't want to, I don't want to spoil their parade yet, but guys that have the playbook for, uh, being super successful in, in, in poker, in the poker environment back in the day. Um, I won't say the name, but if you think of poker and you think of stars in the, uh, in the sky, <laughs> so we can connect the dots there uh i really like intima um very very switched on group uh they've got their key primary market in fact is going to be latin america which seriously surprised me but, but then when i had a look i realized and found out that latin america is one of the most mature markets uh, at the moment uh, of course a big market uh targeting europe as well all about customer acquisition. They've already got what it. What side are they going to be on, Lee? Because there's so many aspects. There's players, there's tournaments, there's gambling, there's there's content. Yeah. You know, where, where do they fit in? They're going to, to be honest, they're fitting, um, they're going to be quite integrated, which is what I like as well. They're going to be playing the ad space, which I think is a huge, huge, huge opportunity. Um, very big, high margin space once you've got the infrastructure and the platform. They are going to have betting infrastructure. They are going to have... Um, Esports infrastructure as well for users, peer-to-peer. -peer, I really like. They've got a peer-to-peer -peer environment, which I really, really like. And the other thing that I really, really like about them too is um, they're going to be getting into the teams. Uh, I won't tell you. I can't tell you too much about that, but they're going to play the team game too. So That's not only are they going to have, not only are they going to have their own teams, they're going to have their own infrastructure. They're going to have their own. Uh, betting environment, and they're going to have their own, you know, peer-to-peer esports -peer e environment. I, I'm, I'm, I'm seeing that the, the the masterminds behind it are expecting that by middle of this year, June, July, that this whole thing is going to come together and be a, a very, very, very exciting platform. Well, it sounds like they're bringing together a great group of people to really get the. This isn't just George and Lee. Mind you, if you and I were starting an esports company, I bet you we'd do great. But yeah. this isn't just. George and Lee saying, hey, let's go do some esports. It sounds like they're bringing together people who are, yeah. like you said, poker, look up to the stars, yeah. make the connections. They know how to reach. Exactly. And, you know, George, I, I really like one of the other ones that you that you guys have been covering very, very well as well. I, I like Fans Unite. I think they've, um, they've done extremely well for being one of the first, first movers, um, done some great financings. They've got some great marketing activity that's happening behind them. Um, First ever, they made history. First ever uh, company to establish an an e an esports uh, sport an esports sports book in the United States. There you go. 
Yeah, it is so, first you know, ever. So it's that's solely esports. And it's not easy, George. You know, it's not easy to be first in. You know, it comes with it comes with you know negative and positive eyeballs, right? And then the the industry needs to sort of calibrate a bit, and then the other players sort of circle in. I know that there's um, a few interesting private plays that are going to be coming public, like imminent um, over the next four to eight weeks, not just here in, in Canada, but in the US side, which will be ones to certainly watch. I'm sure you've probably got some names as well. Um, yeah. Uh, you know, I think of, I think of esports and think of gambling. I mean, the, the, there's obviously clearly going to be some, some exceptional talent that have built amazing online gambling platforms coming into the esports pace so i think we're going to see some great m a take place too george it wouldn't surprise me whether we see both of those industries come together um what you know as single esports companies and single betting companies actually combining forces why not um i don't know are there any other companies that that you got that you're sort of interested in or that you well look i like so i've talked about gmbl the esports entertainment group but for for uh what I, uh, one of our clients i've got to make sure i say that TGS, the gaming stadium, it trades on the stock symbol TGS, right? They uh, are great. So what they're doing is combining uh, tournaments to make it really easy. Uh, they've solved one major problem out there. I've wanted to do an Agoracom esports tournament for over a year, maybe a year and a half, where it's, you know, CEOs of two companies, of a company playing against CEOs, another company in a friendly wow. esports, shareholders are watching, you know, uh, raise a little money towards a charity, but just create that. Couldn't do it. Most difficult thing in the world because I got to send out invites one way. I got to manually do this to award prize. I got to manually do it. And then I got to have the tournament platform. So what they've done is they brought that all together in a platform. So I just go in and say, we're going to have the Agoracom, uh, you know, esports tournament. It's going to be Lee and a couple of his buddies against George, a couple of my guys. You can watch, you can bet on us. We're going to raise money, sell some swag, and do, and I can do it all into one platform. So I love that because I think that's going to be uh, companies are looking for, and I don't think they're aiming towards the professional tournaments. That's that's you know that's a mature business, right? But what they want is it's new corporate branding, it's corporations, it's peer to peer brands, platforms. You got you got websites that just want to find a way to entertain their Twitter, for example, do an esports yeah. tournament right on their platform. And they're also throwing broadcasting on top of that. So they're able to broadcast that onto Twitch and YouTube, but yeah. do it in a really, really yeah. special way. Now you're talking. Yeah, now you're talking. That's yeah. So TGS, TG, TGS, I think, is really smart, uh, is, is, is a really good one to look at as well. Yeah, see, Intima, I, I brought them up. I think they're a, uh, I think they're a 50 cents stockish or something like that today. Um, what are they, 40 million market cap or something? I mean... Look, a business like that's just got to got to go on, you know, be on a be on a on a direction to do say, let's just say ten million or twelve million dollars in revenue a year. I'm sorry, but based on the current, you know, uh, index out there, you know, you're seeing a ten to twenty x opportunity just right now with that business. Uh, so, you know, there, there's obviously a race. It's clear that you know. Getting that infrastructure and that and that uh, platform up and running and going as quick as we can, or as quickly as any of these businesses can, is key. Uh, but I honestly see so many other opportunities that attach. I just see so much technology coming together with this space and and demographics. Let's not forget about that. There's a saying I heard one guy in the industry say. They he said, every day a new every day an old sports fan dies and a new esports fan is born. Because the yeah. fact of the matter is, you know, our kids are exposed to video games and gaming and online esports and all that almost before they're exposed to the real world, right? And it's more exciting for them, all their buddies there. And by the way, what I love about esports, what I really love about esports, and I hope people understand this, is that I'm six foot four. So I played volleyball, I played soccer as a, as a as a defender, I played volleyball as a, as a power hitter, but that's because I was six foot. I was just lucky to be born six foot four and 215 pounds at the time. And, you know, I could kill every just because, but I had nothing to do with me. What I love about esports is that it's the great equalizer, right? <laughs> in, in the sports world growing up, 10, the top 10%, 15% of gifted, 
physically, athletically, I could could really play. Everybody else kind of got crushed, and it was terrible, right? But, but we didn't have an option. Today, it doesn't matter how big you are, and it, not even how old you are. I have a godson that's 10 years old who plays Madden, and I watch him play Madden in online tournaments when I go to his house, and he's killed. He's destroying guys who are four, or three, four times his age. So it's the great equalizer, and I think that's why it's so attractive and gaining such a mass audience because yeah. – Georgie, you know, the 10 year old, 12 year old guy who's short and maybe got lumpy or doesn't have physical, real physical uh, gifts. I can go be LeBron. I can go be Ronaldo. I can go be Crosby. Yeah. Right. And, and if I'm, and, and, and I could really become them. So that's why that market is growing. Yeah. Right? And I think we'll surpass the physical world because most people aren't physically gifted. Yeah, I guess it's like, you know, it's not the same, but I guess you could kind of argue. It's like, you know, retail, bricks and mortar shopping, sort of now yeah. online shopping. I know where you're going with this. Go you ahead. know what I mean? Going, being a, an athlete, going to, or, or, or a spectator, going to a, a huge stadium to watch athletes. Now you're just simply going into that online environment and, you know, like you said, the great equalizer. I like that, actually. That's a really good tagline. Well, and it's a reason why. It's not just because it sounds cool, uh, but it's because that's what drives the market. E-commerce, uh, just to extend where you were going, 15 years ago, if you and I want to start a retail store, man, we had to compete against companies that had billions, locations. Good luck, right? Now, you and I could start an esports merchandising company. Yeah. Right. You and I could create Lee Esports. Cool. If, and boom, get a Shopify store, sell stuff on Amazon and we compete with anybody. It all comes together, George. It all. It, like I said, it's the ad space. It's the e-commerce for merch or, or whatever you want to call it. It's betting and, and gambling. It's participation, more importantly. Uh and, you and know, these kids love to gamble, by the way. When I say kids, I shouldn't yeah. say kids. You know, these young, they're over 18, but uh, they love to gamble. I actually asked them, I go, do you guys bet? They go, oh, yeah, of course we bet. Because when you're watching something, it increases the desire to put $5 on. Yeah. League going to get head to head against each other. Yeah. I mean, you know, that, that can obviously come with its complexities too, because, you know, the gambling, I'm not a, I'm not a big gambler myself. Yeah, either am I, no. You know, when it comes to non-stock market stuff, but you know, um, as long as the regulators are, are on top of it and, and can you know come up with um, a system or policies that you know make it safe, I think is important as well. Especially, yeah, for yeah we don't want to encourage bad behavior. I know Esports Entertainment Group on their peer-to-peer -peer side, uh, they have a when you sign up, you have to create a limit. You tell it, hey, don't let me bet more than $500 in a given week or a month or something like that. That's good. And if you change that limit, you had to wait 30 days. So there's never a case of, oh, man, I just lost 500 bucks to Lee, to Lee. Screw that. I'm going back in. I'm going to win my money, which is where gamblers get in trouble. And by the end of the night, they've lost their mortgage. So yeah. I've lost 500 bucks. And I want to get that money back and say, increase my limit to two grand. Because I'm really fired up right now, right? It says, okay, we'll increase your limit to two grand, but now you got to wait 30 days. And you know what that does? 99% of situations, like, okay, I was an idiot, I lost $500 to leave, but I'm not going to go lose my mortgage. So, no, I'm, not, I'm just not going to do this, right? And that, that's what it does. Yeah. Uh, but we do know the stats from NFL, even though NFL doesn't apply here, the stats apply, which is fa fantasy football. Uh, betting and watching both rise at the same time when they're both available. So the, even if it's five bucks, you know, if people can bet five bucks on who's going to win Lee versus George in this one-on-one -on -one NBA tournament or something like that online, it just increases engagement. People are like, if I'm going to watch, I want to have something on the line. So that's why fans unite F U and uh, F A N S fans and F U N F F fun F F. Uh, I think, is going to be such a great winner or potentially a great winner in the next 10 years. Yeah. And I want to talk to you about that. Remind me, because you said something about 15, 20 X. I want to talk to you about timeframes because I think that's the last lesson we should leave with people. Uh, but 
They are single sport betting is going to be legalized in Canada. They yep. got the first esports sports book set up in the U.S. As long as you don't judge a company day by day, ticker by tick, press release by press release, the wealth is made if you can really stick it out. Uh, and that's why I want to ask you. Yeah, so you Joe, talk about that. A lot of investors are like, all oh, the MVMD went up to 250, now it's down to 150. I'm out. I don't like this. Some people, not all. Talk to it. people about how you make money by sticking to something for the long run yeah. rather than worrying about George, it. George, honestly, I, I, I call it, you know, I, I like to put companies that I really believe in and that I'm, you know, as a, tr as a true investment, long investment into, I, I like to call them wealth creators. I like to put them in the wealth creation bucket. Because to me, I, I mean, I don't, I, I mean, I know that there's luck involved sometimes in, in all of this in, in investing in, in companies and um, you're getting in at the right time and it pops and you might make yourself a 10 bagger in, you know, four weeks or five weeks or whatever that might be. But, you know, that's, that's certainly not my strategy for, um, you know, creating serious wealth. Uh, to me, it's, um, not looking at the share price every single day, not looking at the depth chart every single day, you know, researching the sector, looking at the peers, looking at what the peers are doing. So if I've invested in Intima, I'm looking at what Fans United are doing. I'm looking at what uh, Entertainment ESC is doing. I'm looking at all these other companies just to understand how big of an opportunity there is for that investment that I've made in Intima or Fans, for example, right? Um, you know, I, 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 that's why I always revert to management and executives, you know, like if you've got really good high quality management and executives that you believe are going to go and execute, then let those guys go and execute, you know, and expecting them to have like, yeah. like if we go, you just mentioned MVMD, like expecting MVMD that have got, you know, say four lanes that are in just multi-billion multi dollar multi -billion lanes. Billion dollar lanes expecting them to go and get to work and get all that stuff done and create this insane value within four, five, six, eight weeks or even months is um, too aggressive in my opinion. I like to sort of sit back and let these guys, you know, reach milestones. And every time you're talking to them, as long as they're meeting the milestones all along the way, then it gives you good confidence that, you know, the, the investment strategy of being long and actually patient is the right key. I mean, you mentioned it before with, you know, your lock and key, uh, for your 2017 investment. Um, yeah. And wait another 10 years, you could be sitting on a 50 or 100 bag of there, man. You don't know. I mean, if that's where it goes, then patient. Uh, patient. Yeah, now, I, I, to echo what you just said, I tell, I went online on Facebook on an investor group and I said, there are three factors in your investment decision. One, did the stock price go up? Two, the stock price go down? Three, the other two don't matter. You can't not judge an investment based on it was up this week and it was down this week. The only thing that matters is element. And those two are wealth killers. Yeah. Right? The wealth killers come when you dump a position and just ask anyone who's bought Tesla or Netflix or any of the big tech companies back in 2015 and, and ran out on the first major dips. Go, go take a look at Tesla. Bip. Dip dip but look where it is right now that's how you stay and make six and seven digit kills in your investments so i tell people exactly what lee said is this, is the growth plan still in place is the company still moving forward is the industry still robust then who cares what the share price is you want to stick with that until it it either blows off and does amazing or if it changes, the company is no longer executing. It's had a couple of failures. Yeah. The industry has had a change in it. Yeah. Sell and go up. But for and God's yeah. sakes, people, don't buy and sell stocks based on whether it's up or down this week. That's just nonsensical. Yeah. And that's that's a that's a <clears throat> that's a killer here in Canada. I've certainly recognized that. But George, I mean, how exciting is it to be again in Canada or in North America where we have a new sector in esports? And the dovetail of all these disruptive techs coming together in esports. Uh, Canada, it's had cannabis. It's had now it's had psychedelics. It's getting out of blockchain, which is now coming back after its initial it's so run. And we're so spoiled up here. There's so many ma amazing opportunities that come around the corner everywhere. We, we, we think it's done. Then all of a sudden this new sector comes up and you go, wow. Okay. 
I'm in. You know, we've got now a run rate to mature this sector and make some great, great, obviously, hopefully some great returns from the capital that we inject into our investment decision. So I'm excited for this one, George. I'm glad we're speaking about it. Uh, I really feel like Canada's got, are going to be paving the way again for um, the markets down in, in North America and into Europe and Asia for the space. Uh, I think this year is going to be a big one for it. We're playing catch up, of course, as you know. Uh, but look, I'm, I'm really looking forward to get actually Intima's um, team on your show because I, I know that will happen so they can obviously get a little bit more granular than what I can and of course you know I, I'm always watching when you when you get the, the fans unite guys on as well because I think they've got some some good excitement and some good growth potential as well so yeah and TGS they're doing some good stuff too but Canada is the new Silicon Valley right I've said that do you think I'm off when I say that the reason I say that is Silicon Valley is still Silicon Valley but you can't get in there anymore. You can't invest at the garage level anymore. Yeah. If you don't have $10 million, you can't even show up onto Sand Hill Road. They don't even want to talk to you, which is great. I'm not mock, I'm not making, I'm not criticizing them because that's a mature, is matured. I think Canada is the new Silicon Valley. And this decade, if you want to find the new esports companies, uh, the new biopharma companies, if you are the, the non fungible token blockchain companies, 99% of you don't even know what that is. It's coming, right? Oh, don't, hey, don't worry. Don't, let's just stop there for a second. Don't be surprised if we start seeing decentralized finance, crypto, yeah. and blockchain integrating into esports too, right? Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and people at home right now are saying, what do those mean? How the hell they come together? We'll save that for another time because yeah. we don't want to go overboard this. But yeah. Brent industries or revenue streams or business lines and lanes like you call them that didn't exist 18 months ago are launching now and will be multi ten hundred billion dollar uh, lanes in this decade not tomorrow not next week if you're watching if you're on Instagram you want to buy a Lambo because you're following some influencer guy <laughs> don't invest that's you're going to blow up but if you got patience and you want to find the right companies and be with them for three, five, 10 years, that's how you make you know the money. Lee, how is everyone going to find you? Because we do these shows great every couple of weeks, but you know, how should they find you? Because you comment on these things all the time on Twitter. I follow you, but your, your handle's there, but say it for everybody. Yeah, yeah Twitter, uh, Lee M. Hughes is my Twitter handle. And LinkedIn, I actually really like a lot because you can get a little bit more granular with uh, with content that you can share and read and stuff. So uh, LinkedIn, I like a lot as well. I, I use that a lot. Um, and of course, you know, seeing me on Agoracom and, and other channels like that is always helpful. And you can see it over Lee's right shoulder. So don't worry about scrambling, writing it down. You can always freeze this after it's done, go back blow that up a bit and you'll see it. Make sure you follow. It's one of the, if, if you only follow one new person and you're an investor and you only want to follow one new person on Twitter, trust me, Lee's the guy because he's always at the cusp of new. That's why I love. That's why I follow him. And I follow him. You guys got to follow him. <laughs> Lee, thanks for joining us today, man. Uh, thanks, John. Awesome. Great topic. And can't wait to have you back in the next 10 days. I want to leave you with one thing. Um, yeah. Happy birthday for tomorrow, my friend. <laughs> now you just told everybody how to break into my uh, how to break into my twitter account that's my password my no. my birthday no thank you no i'm just kidding thank oh, you man. happy belated birthday to you no worries appreciate it, it. after we're, our we're, last interview but no, uh, we're both really, pisces i think looking forward to our uh next chat mate i'm really i really like uh lo really like what we're doing here it's good yeah by the way thanks to everyone at home who watched and listened last time you guys gave us amazing feedback that's why we're going to keep doing these uh, because in beyond the press release, it comes from the viewpoint of the company, but beyond the expert comes from the viewpoint of the investor and guys know what they're talking about. And Lee's one of those guys. So thanks for that feedback, everybody. Keep it coming, subscribe, follow, do all that. So we can keep this great vibe and information flow going. Have a great day, everyone. Lee, talk to you soon, buddy. Thanks, George. Thanks.